Hey everybody and welcome to Arcane Wednesday for June 24th, 2020. I'm your host, DM Galabond. Hey everybody, it's Arcane Wednesday. Today is June 24th, 2020, and this week we are going to be talking about the Blur spell. Uh, the Blur spell is one of a number of spells that have existed for a long time in D&D that are all aimed at one thing. Protecting the squishy-ass wizard. Because... <laughs> Wizards are the squishiest, squishiest of the squishy squishies in uh, D&D. They have low armor class. They are very easy to kill, usually, with physical damage. And so the best thing to do is, instead of trying to mitigate that damage, just avoid them getting hit in the first place. So there's a number of spells that are... Uh, have been around for a long, long time that are um, aimed at doing that. And Blur is one of these. So let's go ahead and start as we always do by looking at the... Um, looking at the uh, D&D Beyond for the 5th edition of the Blur spell. All right. Uh, Blur is a second level spell. It lasts one minute. It's a, and it requires concentration. Uh, one action, casting time, illusion spell, verbal components, and it affects only the uh, caster. And in 5e, it's a very simple effect, as are a lot of spells. Just simply, uh, any creature trying to attack the caster has disadvantage because the body becomes blurred, shifting and wavering to all who can see you. And uh, now, if an attacker is immune to the effect or it doesn't rely on sight, as with blind sight, or if it can see through illusions, uh, it is, it's not, the attacker is not affected. Now... As a spell, Blur goes all the way back to 1st edition. Um, it did not exist in original D&D, but uh, it existed as far back as AD&D. Um, and it has been an illusion spell ever since then. Uh, level 2 spell. The duration has changed. And the... Uh, the concept of concentration wasn't something that um, was added, or at least it's been thought about in different ways. So let's take a look. Um, in AD&D, level 2, duration is 3 rounds plus 1 round per level, and the area of effect is the illusionist. Well, that's right, because in 1st edition, you had magic users, who kind of are the forerunners of today's wizards, but you also had a separate arcane using class called the illusionist and everything that the illusionist did was based on illusion or phantasm magic um and so it had a very limited uh spell uh spell selection but some of those illusions could be pretty powerful so when a blur spell is cast, the illusion causes the outline of his or her form to become blurred, shifting, and wavery. Very similar description all the way till 5e. Discortion causes all missile and melee combat attacks to be made at minus 4 in the first attempt and minus 2 on all successive attempts. Uh, it also allows a plus 1 on the saving thro throw die roll for any direct magical attack. So... Um, if the illusionist is entitled to a saving throw against a specific magical attack, uh, they get a plus one on it. Now that's for something that's an aimed attack, not something that would be an area of effect like, let's say, a uh, fireball or something. You wouldn't get extra because just if you're in the general area where a fireball goes off, uh, whether you're here or whether you're an inch and a half over to the left, it doesn't really matter. You're still going to get incinerated. 
All right, so second edition. Almost exactly the same as a, um, well, word for word is pretty much the same description. And then everything is just about the same. The only difference is the fact that in the second edition, they came up with a concept of uh, segments for a round. And so casting time became two segments of a round. Um, so that uh, was very similar. Now, in 3rd edition, uh, Blur, again, is an illusion spell. Uh, bards get it at 2nd level. Sorcerers and wizards also get it at 2nd level. Uh, verbal only and one standard action. Range is touch. So it could be the caster or someone that the caster touched in 3rd edition. And the duration is one minute per level of the caster. Um, and so the subject outline appears blurred, shifting, and wavering. And this distortion grants the subject concealment for 20% mischance. Um, see, invisibility does not counter the blur effect, but true seeing will. And opponents that cannot see the subject ignore the spell's effect, although fighting an unseen opponent carries penalties of its own. Um, so that, that gets us a little closer to the 5th edition exceptions that if you um, have true seeing or uh, blind fighting or something like that, or if, you're, you know, if you don't use vision to see, then it doesn't affect you. And in 4th uh, edition, it does show up there. And uh, it's a wizard utility that you get at 10th level. Cloak yourself with Shimmering Aura, making your outline almost impossible to discern. It's a daily power, uh, which means that uh, it lasts all the way till the end of the encounter. You gain a plus two power bonus on all defenses, and enemies five or more squares away from you cannot see you. So, um, a little bit, little bit of a different thing. Now, this is kind of a that fourth edition makes it a little bit unique because if your wizard is a long range uh, artillery type of wizard that just stands back and lobs uh, long range spells into the battle, then blur could effectively make them invisible to combatants that are there. And it doesn't break invisibility the way that an invisibility spell would you know as soon as you cast a spell it doesn't cause that this just allows you to have that the rest of the encounter so that makes it a very powerful spell which is why why it's something that wizards don't get until 10th level all right so that is our discussion of blur now why do i go through and uh, tell you about the way spells have changed over the different editions. Uh, I think it's interesting, first of all, to look at the as each of the you know the committees that came together to design the different rule sets for D and D, as they all came back and looked at the same spells. You know, what was their thinking? How did they adjust them or uh, change them? Um, or, you know, in some cases they got rid of things and then they brought them back later. Other cases they uh, decided, oh, we need something else and they added it eventually along the way. I think it's interesting because you always, as a DM, you always encounter those players that think they're being really clever and want to use a spell in a way that just is not quite the way it seems like it's intended. Now... Probably the easiest thing to do is just always go with the rule of cool. If it if the player pitches you something that sounds really cool and you want to see that happen, eh, you're as a DM, you're free to let it happen. Um, if you are concerned about whether or not it fits in the spirit of a spell, if you know the history of the spell and you understand how that spell has evolved over time, then you might be able to either have a better sense of whether what the what the uh, player wants to do is kind of in the spirit of that spell, or if it doesn't sound quite right, you may suggest a slightly different effect that is more in line with the uh, spirit of the spell. Um, 
and gives you a little bit more flexibility and it stops you from having to go and look up stuff and and everything is and um, have discussions at the table about uh, things you know you shouldn't need to do that anyway uh, if you're a dm the players should just do what you say uh, during a game session and go on with it unless you ask for their opinion um, but uh, the it's always nice to have that extra knowledge in your back pocket uh, when you're sitting on the dm side of the screen all right, everyone, if you like what we do here on this channel, uh, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. Uh, if you ring the bell, that will actually let you get notified every time a new uh, video goes up on the channel, and uh, you will be able to uh, watch it as soon as it is posted and live. Uh, I'm DM Galabond. If you have any interesting uh, stories about how you have used Blur in a campaign or how a player in a game that you were playing in used the Blur spell or how a monster that you were fighting used the Blur spell. Um, go ahead and put that in the comments. It'd be great to read about that. Uh, and if you have any questions, let me know in the description. You'll find uh, all about the uh, games that I run every week, live stream, and about how to follow me and contact me on all the social media platforms and everything. All right, thank you very much. We will talk to you later. Uh, take care of yourselves. Um, try to stay as safe as you can, and good night. Uh -huh.